the millennial kingdom, which I would call the first stage of the future kingdom of God on earth when Christ will have returned and is reorganizing the world, and of course we all know that the world is in desperate need of reorganization, the devil will have been bound so that he can deceive the nations no longer. This is classical futurism. And at that stage then, a very interesting thing is said about Egypt in Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 10. God said, why will I do these things? Speaking to Egypt here. Because you, Egypt, said, this is my river. I made this river. So I'm against you. I'm against you. And the many branches of your Nile River, speaking to Egypt here. This is God speaking to Egypt. I will destroy Egypt completely. The cities will be empty from Mig Migdal to Aswan as far as the border of Ethiopia. No personal animal will pass through Egypt. Nothing will pass through or settle there for 40 years. That's an extraordinary punishment on Egypt. I will destroy Egypt, it goes on. The cities will be in ruins for 40 years. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations. I will make them strangers in foreign lands. But now here's the hopeful news, the good news. This is what the Lord God says. After having scattered the people of Egypt among the nations, but at the end of 40 years, you'll be glad to hear, Yahweh is going to gather those people together again. I'll bring them back. I'll bring back the captivity of Egypt. I will bring back the Egyptians to the land of Pathros, to the land where they were born. But their kingdom will not be important. It will be the least important kingdom. It will never again lift itself above the other nations. I will make Egypt so small that they will not rule over the nations. And the family of Israel will never again depend on Egypt. So there's a permanent lesson to be learned here in the future. The Israelites will remember their sin. They will remember that they turned to Egypt for help and not to God. And they will know then that I am the Lord God. So you have national entities in that future kingdom. In Isaiah 19, you'll find there's a people, blessed be my people, Egypt. There's a people, Assyria, blessed be my people, Assyria. And of course, there's the people of Israel reconstituted, restored at that time, blessed be my people, Israel. Paul looks at all that in Romans 9 to 11, where he considers the now blinded Israel that has not accepted the Messiah and speaks hopefully then of a time when in the future, through much tribulation, a remnant of now blinded, non-receptive Israel will accept the Messiah. They'll say, blessed is the one, the Messiah that is, who comes in the name of the one God of Israel. So a happy ending is in view for these nations. But Egypt, note, is to be unimportant even when restored. And we read in Zechariah 14 that if Egypt restored after 40 years, apparently, according to this text in uh, Ezekiel, we find that after 40 years, Egypt is still small. And if Egypt will not come and keep the Feast of Tabernacles, then it will be punished with no rain for its crops. So the ending is very, is very happy after a lot of promised threats to various nations. We're finding, for instance, the story of Elam. Elam is going to be devastated. In Jeremiah 49, the land of Elam. But after a short period of trouble, Elam will also be restored. So the same would be true of Edom. Those nations are on the east of Israel. They are going to go through trial and tribulation, but from it comes then the very hopeful prospect of restoration and a recovery in that great time of the future kingdom of God on the earth. Egypt will not rule over the nations, that's what we just read, but the saints are to rule over the nations. Finish with this one, Revelation 2, 26, 27. He who overcomes and keeps my works to the end, I'll give him power over the nations. Revelation 2, 26, 27, citing the great messianic Psalm 2, where it says that Jesus is going to shatter the nations and rule over them to the ends of the earth. The saints get to be involved in that exercise of uh, supervision, along with Messiah, of a world which is in so desperate need of restoration and supervision from a higher power than our present governments can produce.